of the moon and crunch. There we go. All right, there. Let's get a map because we don't we don't have a. Kuakata <laughs> too. Okay. Information. There we go. Disable permit. Put your disable permit. I can hold on. Credit cards only. Is this credit card only? U.S. Park Ranger. It says credit card. Thank you. For the private vehicle, it's twenty dollars. The entrance fee. <coughs> okay. She, it says they're on lunch break. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's free. I got receipt for me again. Okay. okay. Yes. Brown? No, oh, people can go parking here. Okay, it's a yeah, little drive, I guess. <coughs> We're not going to get lost here. <laughs> there you go. Uh, boardwalk. Let's see. Okay, that was the first one. Next. North Crater. This is the North Crater. You can see your undies, Noah. Pull up your pants. <laughs> Devil's Orchard Trail. 2,000 years ago, nearby volcanoes erupted so violently that they have themselves apart, tore themselves apart. Rivers of lava floated huge chunks of crater wall down to this spot. Time passed, rocks scrambled. The seeds of rabbit brush and lumber pine took root in the sparse soil a hundred years ago. A visiting minister declared this jumble of rocks, shrubs, and trees to be a garden fit for the devil himself. Welcome to the devil's orchard. That's why they call this the devil orchard. Because one minister who came down here named this place Devil. The colorful little patches on the rock in front of you are lichens. The first plants to grow in the orchard. They slowly dissolve rock into soil where more advanced plants can take root. Tough as they are, lichens can still be treated by human activity because they store airborne chemicals in their cells. Microscopic examination show that lichen at craters of the moon have been damaged by polluted air. First to grow and first to be damaged. Lichen warns us that the park's air suffer from polluters near and far. James. Misconception and mistake. 
given enough water and enough time for soil to accumulate, even trees will grow in a lava field. Limber pines are such a hardy pioneers. What could have killed all of them here? First came the dwarf mistletoe. The small parasitic plant distorts the branches of limber vines with grotesque tangles called witch's broom. Then came the good intention. To save the area's pines from disfigurement, previous park managers poisoned or cut more than 6,000 affected trees. These managers tried to make nature conform to their vision of what was beautiful or good. They did not take into consideration that limber pine and mistletoe are both native plants, which is broom is born of a long-standing relationship between them. To preserve the park scenery, park managers had cut down park resources, a value judgment about which is broom, and that is unsightly, ugly, bad, cause the death of the trees. Poles of the park. Broken rocks, polluted plants, bad decision. The process of understanding, correcting, and preventing all this is called resource management. To make informed decision, resource managers need accurate current data. And the spark scientists monitor the migration of mule deer, the level of airborne toxins, the impact of park visitors, and the diversity of bird population. Stop and listen. Do you hear a bird? Was the species of bird here last year? And will it be here five years from now? Observing wildlife is like taking the poles of a park. By knowing what is here today, we can be sure tomorrow's changes. Some kind of mushroom, yeah. huh? Okay, let us go. A punchai or what? They have the Devil's Orchard and now they have the Inferno. I don't know what next. But let me see. Let me read this. The Round Knoll of Kipuka. The same, the same searing lava flows that destroy everything in their path today protect some of the last remaining island of natural sagebrush steep vegetation and the Snake River Plain. These features are called Kipukas, a variation of the Hawaiian term Puka, that means hole. Kipuka shows scientists what native plant communities look like before grazing livestock and non-native plants change them. They also provide important baseline data for monument stop and their work to protect and restore and they're going up but i think i'll just wait for them here because uh, no more hiking for me and 
the climb is just two step look at my grandson So they call this Inferno Cone. Cinder cones form when gas rich volcanic froth erupts high into the air and then piles into a mound. Climb Inferno Cone if you wish, but don't be disappointed if you are unable to locate the source of the eruption at the top. These cinders were actually blown by the wind and possibly squirted in this direction from a bend far below near Spatter Cone's parking lot. Look at that. Sibugoy. See, no was. This is this is what my Apu got. Pretty. There we go. This is the lava that dried up. Now look. And wow. Look at that. Look at, look at the drop. This is the lava flow that when this uh, place erupted millions of years ago and now it's uh, dried up look at that it's flowing downhill <coughs> Yeah, you see, lava cascade. The wall of rock in front of you once held back a molten lake of lava. When the lava leaked through the cracks in this natural dam, fiery rivers of lava flowed across the landscape to the east. As you drive south along the roadway, look for evidence of the dramatic events that occurred here only 2,000 years ago. These are extremely fragile pictures. Please observe them from the pavement only. Okay. This is how lava looks like when they dried up 2,000 years ago. Recently. They said it's just recently. 2,000 years ago. And they call this place as the Lava Cascade. That's a lava. They flow down here. Okay. Picnic. <laughs> Dutch Mark. Okay. And this is Andrew. Andrew and that is. Andrew. I want it, Andrew. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. You know. Be careful, okay? And that one you all know already. That boy, and we will have our lunch here. Now, what egg for you? Yeah, picnic all around. See, this is where we stop for our lunch. Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah. Daddy, eat something. Here, my, there's bread here. There's like a lot. <coughs> yeah. We have to roll like we'll this. have our lunch, light oh, lunch. Okay. We're just gonna have a lunch. And uh, we don't have any more itinerary after this. Probably some, yeah, I don't know, yeah. if they plan to barbecue again. Yeah, here, no one is a I don't think so. But, yeah. because so we're good. leaving mm. for Las Vegas tomorrow. So here we are. So, 
This is once in a lifetime a vacation. We learn a lot and we enjoy. <laughs> we have fun. See? Oh, they have the very yummy uh, lunch. <laughs> okay.